My name is Mark Hendrickson. I'm from the Economics Department of Grove City College in Pennsylvania. And I'm going to talk today about antitrust and monopoly. And of course we know from high school that monopolies are sole providers of a service and that they're dangerous because they're going to take advantage of their exclusive control in a marketplace to charge higher than necessary prices to consumers. They're going to gouge consumers. And so we need the government to protect us from these predatory corporations in the private sector. Now this is a little bit interesting because in the real world, historically, the monopolies predominantly have been created by government rather than in a free market. A free market monopoly is a pretty rare occurrence. The only one I can think of off the top of my head was the Alcoa Aluminum Company. For about 50 years, they were the only provider of aluminum ingots in, the, in this country. But that's just because they had economies of scale and kept the prices so low that nobody was willing to compete with them. They eventually lost that monopoly. Now, in contrast to economic monopolies, we have to deal with political monopolies. And political monopolies are those that exist because the state, the government, has erected barriers against competition, such as several centuries ago in the age of mercantilism, where the king would make a deal with one of his allies. They'd give him an exclusive right to a certain market. And of course, the monopolist would take advantage of the absence of competition and jack up the prices. It wasn't good for the consumers. It was good for the monopolist. And it was good for the monarch, because the monopolist would share part of his booty with the king. You know, the king wasn't handing out these favors for free. So that's how they, the political system ripped off the, the, the people. It's always the political monopolies that are dangerous. It's the, the political force that keeps competition from entering the market that allows the monopolist to be abusive. And that creates kind of an ironic situation because antitrust law passed by government is essentially the government saying, we are going to protect you consumers from predatory monopolists out there in the private sector. Historically, if you look at the antitrust legislation that was passed during the Progressive Era, the Sherman Antitrust Act of 1890, the Clayton Antitrust Act of 1914, the Supreme Court decided several cases there breaking up large American corporations. For what? What did they do that was harmful that caused them to be broken up? Well, it certainly was not charging high prices to consumers. The historical record shows that time after time, these corporations became dominant in their industries because they charged lower prices. And they were still charging the lowest prices at the time they were sued and at the time they were convicted. So you had a case where laws that ostensibly were enacted in order to protect consumers from the possibility of greedy companies charging them high prices was breaking up American corporations for the alleged crime of charging low prices. Kind of ironic, isn't it? 